Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we'll bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Today we're finally driving the Neo 89 on public roads. And having driven the car, I've decided to dedicate this video, this entire video, to a single feature. And that's the active chassis, because it stands out so much. I also fear this is the video where my reputation, if there is any, get seriously questioned because what I'm about to describe are purely subjective opinions. There's no data to back it up or, oh well, actually there is data. Look on the screen. This is what the active chassis is doing to the car in real time. How much pitch, how much roll, how much heave motion there is in the car and how much power it's generating or taking away from the car in real time. But this has no, you wouldn't have any sense of what any of these data means because it's not a, uh, it's not dimensions, it's not power torque, zero to 100 acceleration. Just those numbers itself, you would have a sense of where this car sits. But looking at this, how do you know if this active chassis is any good or any bad? Well, actually there is. You look for the difference between the wheel motion and the upper body motion, but it's, it's so difficult to explain this in a representative way. I'll put all the usual data on the screen for you to see, and you can see even through the, a conventional lens, this is still a deeply impressive car. But this active chassis, it's not common. We are standing right at the bleeding edge of technology here. And that means reviewers like me needs to invent or at least broaden our vocabulary and to find new expressions to explain this new sensation. If there's no data to help, can I show the, the effect of this active chassis uh, in video to show you the visual difference? Sadly, no. To show how this active chassis behaves differently to uh, passive chassis cars, from the outside, it would have to be a drastic difference. You know, like jumping on and off a bridge, but sadly, the roads around this area are all, are all perfectly paved. There is no big um, vertical jumps. Or the Shangpeng Tower. That is very visually striking, but who else puts six layers of Shangpeng glasses on the bonnet in real life? So, they, on these, like, public roads, there is no visual way to tell you how special this chassis is. But still, I would like to dedicate this entire video focusing, laser focused on this single feature of this car, and that's the active chassis, because it's, it's so amazing. The difference is immediately obvious in the first few hundred meters. Because as a driver, you've driven other cars on roads before, and when you see the road surfaces change, whether there's a um, downhill, incline, um, positive camber, negative camber, there's a pothole, there's a manhole cover, you have a certain expectation of how the body should behave and how the body actually reacts to that um, surface change is how you judge where this chassis is. You know, if it's GT3 RS firm, if it's sports car firm, if it's a performance saloon, if it's a luxury saloon, if it's a hatchback, if it's an SUV with on-road bias, if it's an SUV with off-road bias, um, roll control, anti-dive under heavy braking, etc., etc. The ET9, because it has active chassis, it controls every direction of the body movement. So, as you have seen in a previous video, the nose doesn't dive at all, even in full emergency braking. And the car has very little roll. It still has some. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, but the heave control, it's just, it absorbs and slows down all of the vertical shocks. Now, you could say all dampers does that. That's what dampers do. But this active damper does it in an active way. Passive dampers, they only absorb energy and decides how quickly or slowly um, it stops the body motion. But this active damper, in a way, makes you feel it's repaving the road on the fly. It makes you feel it's, 
repatching the road as it drives over them. It does that through generating support and taking away support at a precise moment so that you feel every surface change, every pothole is that much less dramatic in a very active way. You can feel, you can tell a passive chassis, passive dampers, 100% cannot do this. Now you might say you have been on a vehicle like that before. It's called a train. It just glides over the surface with little to no body motion. If the ET9 is like a train, it might not necessarily be a good thing because yes, the passenger would feel, wow, this is so comfortable. Nothing is happening to the body. But to the driver, especially in the first few kilometers, it will make the driver car sick because all of your previous experience looking at a bump and you think how this body should react, but the car has, the body has no reaction whatsoever. It messes up your muscle memory. It messes up your sense of balance. You could realistically get car sick if this car is really like totally like a train, glides over all the surfaces like the champagne tower mode. But the ET9 is not a train all of the normal body movement you would expect from a car, you still have them. It's just been further controlled, further lengthened, smoothed out. It does this so seamlessly to the point that if you are just sitting in the back, you would just think, this is a normal car. You know, it's quiet, it's comfortable, it's luxurious. Of course it should be. You pay the equivalence of over 110,000 US dollars. It should be like this. And to be honest, this is not that different to a Maybach S-Class, BMW i7, Audi A8. They are all like this because you don't have the AB comparison. The difference is not that big. And also because you don't see the road ahead, you only feel the effect. If you're sitting here on the front passenger seat and let's say you're not a keen driver, you're just enjoying the ride you would feel, again, this is quiet, comfortable, luxurious, but you would also have a slightly strange feeling you've never had on other cars before, because now you can see the road sitting at the front. You can see all the imperfections, the bridge, the slope, the manhole cover, the potholes, but the car behaves good, but not, not just good, it has a certain quality that you can't quite put your finger on because you're only the passenger. You're not turning the steering wheel, you're not pressing the throttle, you're not pressing the brakes, controlling the regen. Now in the driver's seat, you have the complete picture. You are turning the steering wheel, pressing throttle, pressing brakes, controlling the regen, and you have all the road information ahead. All your previous experience with other cars on different roads have built in a complex set of muscle memories. You have a spectrum. When you see the road ahead changes, depending on how the car reacts, you have an idea of how good or bad this car is. And this ET9 is completely outside of that envelope. It doesn't just take a bump in a reactive way, actively builds patches around it. It doesn't actually do that, but the active dampers gives you support and take away support at a precise moment so that you feel this is a different road. And the icing on the cake, this chassis is active, but it doesn't want to hide anything. All of the information, it still tells you, it's just been reduced to a level that no passive chassis can achieve. You can also experience the car with the active chassis turned off. Just switch to eco mode. Hi, Nomi. 驾驶模式调节到节能 Now this is a passive chassis car just like every other cars on the road and it's still good you know this is on air springs with um, now reactive dampers but you just feel the car is now following the road that much more all of the it's immediately obvious all of the imperfections on the road is being transmitted more into the cabin and you need to remember this is how all other cars on the road is like. Now we turn the active chassis back on. Hi Nomi. I'm
Yeah, in the first few bumps, you can immediately tell this car is actively smoothing out all of the road surface changes. It's a subtle difference, but you can immediately feel it. Now, are there any downsides? I could think of one. If you've driven cars with 48 volt active anti-roll bars, those cars can also cancel out roll to the point that it hides its weight very well in normal driving. For example, an Aston Martin DBX or a Bentley Bentayga feels like a Porsche Macan, feels like the size of a, an Audi Q5 in normal driving. But a 48 volt active anti-roll bar only controls roll. It doesn't control pitch. So it gives away under heavy braking. Under heavy braking, all of the weight is just bearing down the front axle and you suddenly feel this is actually a 2.3 ton car. But this active chassis, because it has controls on every direction, even under heavy braking, it hides its weight so well. Now, why do I say that's a downside? Because it takes away the last hint to tell you how massive, how heavy this car actually is. Even under heavy braking, this car doesn't give away. It's actually a 2.7 ton, 5.3 meter long, ultra luxury saloon. It feels like a normal car. And if you're not conscious about that and start pushing this car flat out, at some point it will reach its physical limit. But with this active chassis, it hides the outer dimensions of its capabilities so well that if you are reckless, the consequences, it would be no consequences and then heavy crash. But then you could say that's not very relevant for a 5.3 meter long luxury limo. Yes, if this is a performance car, that would be a real downside. But having driven the car yesterday and today, and you know, when we are trying to review a car, we tend to slightly overdrive it to find the limits, to find out certain attributes about the car faster. So we are driving faster than normal, but still, I cannot tell. I have not even, I have not even felt I've reached even close to the outer limit of this car. But I must have been because I've been pushing that hard on the road. But that cliff of the car being capable and the car completely gives up, I don't know where that is. Maybe because that's because this active chassis is too good. This was supposed to be a full review, but. I thought if I could explain maybe even 10% of how this active chassis contributes to this car, that would be an achievement in itself. We will get this car from Neil later to show you the amazing cabin and the even more amazing rear cabin and the chip, the autonomous driving later. But the active chassis means it feels like the magician is only revealing his tricks to the driver alone. The best seat in this car is definitely 100% the driver's seat. It's not the boss seat in the back. Yes, for a 5.3 meter long luxury limousine, the best seat is the driver's seat. Who would have thought? That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.